Today I'll be reviewing an experimental gas mask, which would be the prototype to the M51 Combat Vehicle Crewman Gas Mask, manufactured by Avon Protection Systems, otherwise, otherwise known as the XM51 JSGPM, or Joint Service Gas Protective Mask. I was fortunate enough to get this gas mask in its original factory box, unissued. Um, this this mask it has the box specifically designated to the mask. You'll see another video of a XM50 gas mask, also unissued, and I got I do have to say that each box is representative of the mask itself. It's not like I'm reusing the box um, just for the video. So as you can see, as you can see, um, mask CB JSGPM combat vehicle XM51 medium. Uh, manufacture date May 2004. Expiration date May 2014. So, I have my camera up on a on a higher stand because the amount of stuff in this kit is insane. Uh, I don't even know if I'm gonna pack it away in the video. I'll probably just leave it out and, and the video from there. But uh, as you can tell, my kit came with a lot of filters already. You can see them off the back. Um, the XM51 and XM50 filters between 2001 and 2004 are different. They're completely different. So as you can see, the the M61 filter canister is kind structurally kind of different. If you compare this to a regular M61 filter as of now, uh, being manufactured for service masks now, you could kind of tell that this one's more uh, rounded, if it makes sense. It's very hard to tell if you haven't handled an experimental filter compared to an actual service filter. Um, biggest noticeable difference though is the moisture slash dust debris indicator. Otherwise, a lot of people like to call it the expiry indicator. Uh, it'll tell you whether the filter is good or bad. It'll be like a little packet full of white, white powder, um, which is what we're going to call it for the video, white powder. Um, it's really not powder. It's just a indicator to tell you if this filter was exposed to dust, debris, water, or moisture. Um, thankfully mine is white, so it's not really bad, though it is expired. I have seen these where, especially the 2001 models, where, uh, I got them and they're completely blue, which is what they would turn if this filter was bad. So I'm going to take all the filters out. So you got one, one, two, three, four. So you got two sets. Take the mask out. I'll review the mask after I, I review all the accessories. Um, got the canteen cap, which is also experimental. You have the NSN X'd out. Manufacture date 2004, expiration date 2014. This really doesn't expire. It's a canteen cap, but. Then with the uh, XM50, XM51 series, the carriers were also different. These are so easy to tell apart because this is OD and green. The actual M50, M51, uh, and M53 carriers are kind of like a gray uh, uh, color. So you kind of have Molly on the side, Molly on the back. This is the additional accessory pouch, by the way. Uh, you kind of have like a pocket for your uh, operator's cards. You open it up. You have slots for your uh, NAC kits or 2PAM. You have a little a pocket for other uh, decon accessories, your M295, M291, and then maybe uh, like a waterproofing bag, what have you. Whatever the mission dictates. Open up. This would be where the microphone would be held. Also experimental, though um, it's in the mask, so you'll see it later. It'll hold the microphone lead, microphone uh, adapter, and a dynamic microphone all in one. So when when this was being packaged by Avon, uh, they just print off a label with all its barcodes and put it all in one package. You have the um, hose and hood, also manufactured uh, 2004. So this is an experimental hose. See, so, yep, this is a experimental hose but not really that much different from an actual M51 hose. I, so I'm not gonna spend too much time, I'm just gonna, gonna show it. Yeah, 
and the XM51 hood. Like, and this one isn't any different other than the manufacture date than the an actual M51 hood. So, like I said, I'm not gonna spend too much time. You have the comms lead. You have the microphone and dynamic microphone adapter. That is one thing that's different about this mask is that the dynamic microphone is different. It has these little little bridges on the side there. Um, I'm not sure what it's for, but this is a different designation other than the M. 101 AIC uh, dynamic microphone and I know the current issue um, dynamic microphones are gray just like this technically this audio frequency adapter could work on its own be uh, rather other than um, it could work on its own without the dynamic microphone here mainly because of it having this little circular um, audio pickup here um, I've tested it before, it does work, and it also works on the gray models. So if anybody tells you that uh, the gray models or the, the black models need this to work with this, it's it's a lie. It, it it works. The There's an older model that's just a gray uh, plug-in that's blanked off with no audio pickup in there. That, that would need a dynamic microphone. It all depends on what you're using the microphone for, because there are different microphones for different different uh, uses there's one for like traffic control there's one for combat vehicle there's one for just radios etc then you have the uh voice the the voice uh projection unit vpu uh, manufactured 2004 expiration date 2009 serial number Four one nine. So that's a very low serial number. Um, I tested this out. Also works pretty good, actually. And lastly, waterproofing bag. Operators cards that are designated. This is what I like about these operators cards is that they actually mention the XM15, XM51. But they would be generally the same like any operators cards for the um, the mask. Just a little neat uh, mention there to the prototypes. Then you have the carrier, a very fresh carrier. All the OD green. Then you'd have a very large pocket. That's uh, another difference between this carrier and a regular M50 carrier is that this additional pocket here um, would only open in a small little pocket or a slit on the regular gray M50 carriers. This is the entire span of the carrier, which huge, huge pocket, lots of storage room, and you'd have a little Molly strip right here to attach it to your flick or your your vest, IOTV. And then you'd have even more pockets and more accessory storage. Uh, I assume they got rid of this because really, um, I'm not sure why you would need that much storage. They, they did make it smaller in the final version, so for sure. Though I do like the fact that they uh, did include in, the, in this carrier a little, little hole. Um, I can only assume this is for the, actually the, the CVC hose, the combat vehicle crew hose, or getting out debris from the mask, or like if you got like dirt or debris in there, you can drain it out, or the CVC hose. Uh, you do, also do not have the pocket on regular M50 carriers for the outserts. Uh, on regular M50 carriers, you'd have like a little pocket on the bottom here that holds uh, the the ballistic outserts, uh, tinted clear, laser, blue blocker, etc. Uh, you do not have that with this carrier. 
to the mask itself. I'll move the box out of the way. Yep, I got it in the uh, the original wrap, plastic. Also, as a side note, I did not open. I know a lot of people might say that, hey, you opened an unissued uh, gas mask. Why'd you do that? You ruined its value. Though, um, with a lot of these masks, I got them. I got them um, opened. So, unfor so just wanted to put that out there. Here is the the mask. You have the experimental tinted outsert. Um, you have the old style clear silicone um, self sealing valves. These are the ones that the uh, Air Force actually reported that were faulty because after the prototyping phases, they kept these valves on the regular M50 masks that were serviced, and it became aware that after a while, they would stay open um, after you put on your M61 filter canisters. So immediately they they uh, deadlined deadlined the item, replaced them with a white self sealing a disc valve. It's a face form. Nothing really too different about the face form. The face form stays the same between all models in the XM50 series. So does the head harness. Size medium, like the box said. Manufactured 2004. Oof, stiff. Taking off. Taking off the uh, primary voice emitter cover, you can see rather than a black valve, XM50s would typically have orange. Um, I find that these, the quality of these are pretty much the same, no different. They're still thin rubber, just different color. Uh, you'd also notice that the valves on the inside of this, orange, not black. In case you were wondering, in case you were wondering how to take off the primary voice meter cover so you don't damage your own M50 or, or uh, XM50, you would you would take the drink tube, drink tube lever, you would you would place it parallel to the uh, horizontal as if you know parallel to the marching surface, and then you would take your hand. There's gonna be like this little groove right here. Typically, what I like to do is put my fingers in there and just kind of ease ease it off and then you would take it off that way you as a collector or even if you're a receiver and specialist um you don't damage your mask if you're trying to you know clean the inside and to put it back on you just snap it back on it's not really a hard part everything about this mask or maintaining this mask is operated level um there's really nothing higher than or more complex than what you can do yourself with this mask. On the inside of the mask, you can clearly see that it's clear silicone rubber. Um, with the M50s, it is uh, black silicone rubber. And you can still see that orange valve in there. Clearly. These masks, the XM50s, are only as good as probably training masks because... This, these masks are so old, um, and, and there's a reason why they moved on from using these clear silicone uh, parts. Um, yeah, it's like the clear silicone valves. You have a clear silicone nose cup. I believe, at least in the uh, Seaburn school, I remember a couple of my buddies were issued this mask, uh, the XM50, and that was also this around the same time they were taking the parts on replacing them with black nose cups and uh, the white disc valves. So let me lay everything out and kind of kind of showcase it. The box. The, the carrier. Face form. Mask. BPU, waterproofing bag, hose, the four filters, drink tube cap, uh, the dynamic microphone, accessory pouch, comms lead, 
operator's cards, the hood, and I got a few other bags, but I'm not going to put them in there. Um, but yep, pretty much all of this, like I said, is, is an XM51. In general, an XM51 or M51 compared to an XM50 or M50, the main differences and the main components you need is the hose, the comms lead, the microphone or uh, audio frequency adapter, and uh, and hood. Um, the the VPU, I mean, it came with it, but um, really, I, I you don't really need it. Um, you're not gonna be using a voice amplifier inside a, an armored vehicle uh, unless uh, your unit dictates that you need one or or what have you. Otherwise, like, I've never really seen an M51 use it. This could be good with an M50, but um, very fortunate to have such a complete kit. This actually came from Aberdeen Proving Ground um, from from somebody who was um, just listed on eBay and wrote a note inside saying, hey, um, yeah, pretty much this came from Aberdeen. So a little nice little history to it. I don't know where my XM50 came from, but yeah, uh, if you liked it like this video want to see any more experimental masks just um leave a comment or uh, leave a like subscribe if you want to see more uh, gas mask reviews and uh have a good one